No, stop. No. <laughs> What do we got today? See that? Apparently that means it's special in some way, but to me, it's just another Mustang. <gasps> I know. What are we doing on this thing today? This was at another shop. They are a detail shop. They do PPF and ceramic and stuff like that. They're right down the street from us. And they had brought it to the guy that normally does their paint work and they just wanted rock chips and stuff touched up. Uh, instead, what the guy gave them was, see that? That was homie's idea of touching up rock chips and it's like that <laughs> all over the hood. It's like he didn't even put color matched paint in the rock chip, he just put like black paint in there and it's all like, had a reaction or bubbled up or something. And so there's little, it's like solvent pop. It looks like solvent pop. So maybe he mixed some clear in there with touch up paint and it just solvent popped everywhere. But there's like little bubbles in the chips and they're the wrong color too. And it's all over the hood. There's like, yeah, and it took him a month to do it. So needless to say, they were not very happy with that guy's work and now the car's here. So I'm fixing the rock chips. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys kind of the rundown on how I'm gonna fix those. Reed's just taking out the, uh, the little vents right now, right here, so that I don't have to paint those because they're not chipped up or anything. And then we're fixing the front bumper here. We're just doing a little spot job. The guy didn't wanna pay to redo the whole bumper cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and just burn in the clear over on the, the sides right here, on both sides. And then I'm just gonna spot in a little bit of color on this scrape. You can see we're missing some paint right here, missing some paint right here. And then the rest of this has just got some light scratches and scrapes to it. Um, gonna keep the repair as small as possible on this. Cause again, no money, so. Just trying to make it as nice as possible on a budget because he wants to get the whole thing PPF'd. All right, so repair process on this. I've got chips literally everywhere. It's hard to see inside here, but we've got little weird bubbled up chips all over the front of this thing that are really hard to see on the camera, but they're all over the nose. And then there's a few scattered through the back here, kind of in the middle. So essentially what I'm gonna do is just sand the whole thing down in 800 grit. I've already got some color match paint that I went ahead and mixed up. Uh, I don't remember what the actual name of this color was called. Do you remember? Highland Green. Um, I wound up using some Ford Forest Green chip and then tinting it because I didn't have a chip for the actual color itself but I mix some of that up and what I'm gonna do is thin it out like crazy so it's just like super, super opaque and then I'm gonna throw one dust coat of base over the whole hood to just hide all the little chips and imperfections and stuff like that, load on some clear and the whole car's already been like wet sanded flat pretty much so the hood can be nice and flat and smooth and I don't gotta worry about matching no orange peel or anything. I always do this beforehand, before I do anything. Especially like, if you're going to paint a panel and you you can really just feel it. Like, you run your hand across, you'll be able to tell if there's some kind of wax or coating or something on there versus the paint just being kind of like dry and like a little unkept. Um, I always go over it and just wipe it down with solvent-based reducer, like base coat reducer. Um, I do that because it's one of the few things that's so aggressive on the paint that it will actually just rip the stuff straight off the surface and even like soften up the surface of the clear coat a little bit. 
um, but it's not so hardcore to the point where it's gonna like melt the paint off the panel. It's just the extra step of reassurance because the last thing I want to do is to try to paint over ceramic coat or some bullshit and just have it start fish eyeing everywhere, reacting, and no one likes dealing with that. So I already wiped it down with two different types of wax and grease remover. And now we also wiped it down with reducer just to get all the schmutz off the surface and make sure that the hood is clean and ready for sanding and paint. But the way that I always tell when it's like ready to go is a, a wax surface or a ceramic coated surface, your fingers are just gonna kinda wanna glide across it a little bit. It's gonna feel really smooth and slick, but on a nice like dry, just ready to sand paint, there's gonna be plenty of drag and resistance on your fingers when you run them across the panel. With little spot repairs and stuff like this, um, what I've gone ahead and done is in the area where I'm actually gonna be spraying base coat, um, I went ahead and I put some primer over the repair, right, some UV, and then I got that all feathered out in 800 grit. So this whole area here is in 800. And then what you're gonna do um, when you're doing repairs like this is you step the grits up as you work further away from it, right? So the areas, over here on the sides where I'm going to be actually burning the clear coat in to the I'm going to be burning the new clear coat into the old clear coat through this little area right so I put that in 3000 grit uh, a lot of people just do like a step one like a, a breast, a, a abrasive compound um, I don't generally like to do that I feel like you can still get away with the 3000 grit and uh, it just it makes me feel a little bit better at the end of the day, knowing that there's actually some sand scratches under there, as opposed to just some compounding. Um, you can, I'm sure you can get away with doing it, you know, with just the compound, but I've never liked just doing the compound. So we're gonna do 800, 2000 in this area, and then 3000 in the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and 2000 all the way up to about here on that side as well. And we're just going to shoot our first coat of clear covering over all the base and then the second coat of clear all the way out to the edge and we'll peel the soft edge while that second coat is still wet and then I'll throw the edge blender over it.
So the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do it on this hood is throw down just a quick thin layer of Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. And to some of you guys that might sound kind of weird, um, but I have a couple reasons why I'm gonna do that. So the first thing is I'm gonna use it almost kind of like a transparent sealer, right? So I've got the whole thing prepped out in 800 and 1000 grit right now. So I'm gonna use that to just ever so slightly fill in some of those sand scratches so that that coat of base that I put on there lays out nice and smooth and we don't see it swelling back in any of those scratches or anything, leaving any weird kind of, you know, pigtails or sand scratches or anything like that. Uh, another reason I'm doing it, and this is more important, is it's gonna even everything out. It's gonna get rid of that haze from sanding so that I can see where each one of those little weird touch-ups is that the guy did. So I can go back over it with my touch-up pen and I can dab a little bit over top of those because the paint that's in there, it looks like black compared to the green. So it's gonna need a little bit more coverage than just the half coat of base that I'm gonna put over top of the whole hood. So I'm gonna go around and just dab those spots. And that way, when I put the half coat of base over it, everything's covered and there's no weird, you know, those little spots with the bubbles and stuff like that. So you can't see any of that. The last reason is the adhesion promoter is going to help hide some of the spots up on the nose where there's like lighter chips that aren't all the way through the clear. So that way I don't accidentally go overboard and dab paint in those when they don't need it. So essentially it's gonna just show me which ones it needs. And then also I get the added benefit of a little bit extra assurance for the adhesion. Uh, there's a lot of guys that swear you can only use adhesion promoter on plastic, but if you read the data sheet, uh, you can actually use it over painted surfaces and stuff like that as well. So yeah, we get a lot of benefit from just one product and it's gonna help us out tremendously on this job. So I'm in the middle of polishing up this hood and I got a little time opening in my paint booth. Uh, someone was supposed to reserve it today, but luckily for me, they didn't show up. So I noticed when the car first came in and we probably have some shots of it, I don't know. Probably. Yeah, we probably got some shots we can show you guys of the color on the, where the front bumper right here met up against the hood and it already didn't match very nice, but now that the paint is all nice and shiny and, you know, it's got my color on there, which is going to be slightly different than what was on there anyway. Um, now it's just like accentuated, like it looks not the greatest. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is dust a little like quarter coat of base right along the top edge of the bumper where it meets the hood here. 
just so that we have a real nice continuity and flow to everything and the color looks uniform and no weirdness and I'll just spot in that little top section on the bumper. Uh, I wouldn't normally do that. I would just paint the whole bumper cover. But since they already just had me do the spot in down on the bottom, that tells me that the customer is not afraid of just doing spot in type stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do it like that.